So hello and welcome to this extra special edition of Celebrity Big Brother Reunions. Uh, we've got Alex rejoining us in just a moment, but let's say hello to Jess Cunningham. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you, Lewis. How are you? Really good, thanks for coming on. And we've got the legend that is Fat Man Scoops in the house. How are you? What's going on? What's going on? How you feeling, man? Everything good over there? Really good, thanks. I'm loving the discs in the background, by the way. It looks incredible. Oh, no, I haven't even put these up. Like, I'm supposed to put... These are some of the ones that could fit on my wall. Uh, I have a lot of them, but these are the ones that could fit on my wall. I'm actually putting them up for my Instagram Live uh, series that I do every night at 11 o'clock your time. Um, and, and I just needed some decoration. So I haven't even put them up. They're just, they're just sitting on the table back there. I'm trying to put them up over the weekend. Well, just before we were we were on air, we actually um, you guys were speaking about your time in Big Brother, and actually with everything going on at the moment with lockdown, the virus, you kind of said there's some similarities. So uh, going over to you, Jess, um, first of all, yeah. what, how would you sum up your time in the Big Brother house? Because it was a very confrontational <laughs> year. You, of course, had Kim Woodburn and Heidi and Spencer. Yeah, do you know? I, I, do you know what Heidi and Spencer are amazing? They're actually a really, really lovely couple. Um, and I thought Kim was great. She's mad as a hatter. Um, but I thought she was brilliant. But the actual experience, I think because I'm so used to doing something and so used to working on my business, going into a house where they don't want you to do anything apart from get drunk, mm. it's just it's just a really it's a really weird experience. Like I taught myself how to juggle when I was in there just to try and keep my brain occupied. Well, of course, we knew you before you even went in the house for being on The Apprentice with Lord Sugar. Now, he's quite a, a tough character to be around. So who was harder to be around, Lord Sugar or Kim? Lord Sugar, definitely. <laughs> Lord Sugar would be scary. Um, now, Fat Man Scoop, when you went into the house, all of us in the UK, we were a bit surprised that you went on and we were all buzzing that you were just going into the house. So what made you want to take part in the show? I don't know, I was supposed to do it like for three years. Um, and I, I just, I was working so much, I never got an opportunity. I went out to LA for the casting like twice, you know, cause I was out there one time doing something and the other time they were like, oh, you out here, just come come on out. Um, I just thought I, I wanted to challenge myself. And, you know, part of challenging yourself is doing things that you've never done before. And that's actually why I did it. There was no other real reason behind it, but that I wanted to see if I could stay in that house and, and do it. And, mm -hmm. and I actually did. And yeah, you know, I had people on my, on my year that would make Alan Sugar look like nothing. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, had, I had cats on me that would make Alan Sugar look like, like, I mean, I go deal with Lord Sugar. I'm gonna be like, yeah, well, uh, nothing. <laughs> You know, because, uh, you know, American people by nature are a little bit more aggressive. And I know, and I, you know, of course, I know who Lord Sugar is. I know who Alan Sugar is and how he get down and what he does. But that had nothing on Celebrity Big Brother the year that the English and the, and the Americans were in there. So um, it was just it was just me wanting to take a challenge and do something different, really. And what year were you in, Fat Man, Scoop? What year huh? were you in? I was in the year of the English versus the American. So I was in the year of, um, I, don't, I think that might have been 17 or something. I was in the year of, yeah, I think it was like 17. I was in the year of uh, myself. Um, um, who was in there that year? Myself, um, Jenna Jameson, Farrah Abraham. Yeah. Um, um, of course. Yeah, the, yeah. The name's right. My man, my man, um, shit, uh, uh, Fucking, all, all the names are, are fleeting me now because I talk to all these people, so what am I doing? <laughs> I just, I just, hold on. James Hill was in there. Austin Armacost. Oh, Armacost James, I know James. Austin. Yeah, I spoke to Austin, Austin and James two days ago. Yeah. Um, who I else see. was in there? Um, Daniel Baldwin, I spoke to him like a, like a month ago. Um, Janice Dickerson was in there with us. Um, oh, wow. Uh, what, what's yeah, the dude that plays... Um, What's the dude that plays um, DCI? Fuck. The ball head dude. Oh, here you go. So you've got, um, you had Daniel Baldwin, you had Chris Ellison, uh, Gail yeah, yeah. Porter, uh, Farah, Janice Dickinson, Sherry Hewson, uh, Stevie Yo, Sherry Ritchie. Hewson was in there. <laughs> Sherry Hewson was in there with uh, me. Stevie Ritchie, Bobby Davro, Stevie, Natasha Stevie Hamilton. Went, Stevie and Chloe were in there with me. Who else was in there with me? Um, Austin Armagos, Chloe. Chloe. 
Yeah, I was in, I was in there with a mix of with a mix of people. Yeah. It was very interesting to me. I I tell you this: if I would have known what the fuck I was really getting into, they'd have had to pay me four times the amount of money. That's what, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a real it's a real mind it's a real mind fuck. Like that, that's yeah. serious business. I can imagine. Uh, you should see now on the call. We've got Alex Reeds uh, joining us, so you should see him any moment popping up on your screen. Um, so, Scoop, just going back to you, when you were in the house, you were so chilled, like you just kept yourself to yourself, you didn't get involved in any of the arguments. Did you find that tough to be around when it was explosive? Nah, nah. What's happening, bro? How you feeling? What's good with you? Hey, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, oh, good. How are you? Yeah. I'm... I'm... <laughs> We got some signal issues there. We're struggling Bro, to hear saying, you. He sounds sound like he's on the space. I'm show. doing this from my mobile, so I've only got right. We got good. Well. There we go. That should load in. Oh, we doing boys and girls? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Perfect. So, Alex, we just um, asked everybody else um, about obviously Celebrity Big Brother. Now, of course, you won the show. You were in there with some big names like Vinnie Jones. Um, what made you actually want to take part in the show? And what was your experience like? Um, I never wanted to do the show, to tell you the truth. Um, the last thing I wanted to be was to be famous for being famous. And, um, but I got like a mind coach for my, my sports, for my, my fights at the time. My name was Mud. I was like, I was like this, this shit on your shoe. And my mind coach said to me like, I said, I don't want to go in there and do this. So look, you don't don't do it to like win the show. Do it to win people over. So people see the real you. I had such bad PR, and it was to me it was a PR move because I was so hated. And I thought if I show people the real me, I win. Not in the show, but in life. Yeah. And yeah, I, I did. I won the show ever in history from forty to one odds. You win. won a very good year. Must have done right. Yeah. I made to my mates a lot of money. <laughs> I know. Wish I would have placed the bet that year. <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> makes, well, makes a lot of money. Yeah. So twenty one um, odds. Jesus. Jess, going back to you, uh, yeah. what stands out as one of your highlights and funniest moments? So when you think about your experience, what did you find the funniest uh, during your time in the house? Do you know what? I think I blocked a lot of it out. Um, probably Kim actually. Like Kim was just absolutely mental. But I thought she was brilliant. Like some of the stuff she used to come out with, or like she'd, she'd tell you one thing, she'd literally, when you talk to her, you'd know you'd have to commit like 45 minutes because she'd just keep you there. But once she kept me there, and as she's talking, I fell asleep. So that wasn't, that's was probably, that, that was it. But it was just really, it's just an experience that I've never, ever been used to because I've got such a busy life with kids and with everything just going in there and it just being quiet and just being just I don't know it was just just a really weird and it is it's a complete mind like mind fuck because yeah. you're constantly thinking you're like well what the show what that's show it and it's just a real and back then as well I think after the apprentice I think I went on TV because I, I felt like I needed some form of validation and when I went into that house, I still needed that. Whereas coming out of it, and like you, what you said, Alex, so I'm actually a mindset coach and a life coach. So all of the work that I've done on myself, is I validated myself. And now, that's just, I just don't, it's like I was a different person. It's so far removed from who I am. It's weird. What was great was about long you answer. was... I mean, you were talking about Kim, and obviously you two, it was heated to start with, but then you had this kind of friendship that came out of nowhere and of course Kim had a, a kind of phrases like gang handed chicken livered shit so whatever else she came out with it was just comedy gold so did you guys ever go to the Ivy like she promised no we didn't uh, to be fair though I went to so she's quite big in, in the gay community so when she came to Sheffield um, we went to this club together and I've never seen anything like it literally she must have had um, like two, three hundred men just queuing up to want to get pictures with her. And to say she's like 70 odd, she's like jazzing, she's dancing. She was up till about three in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Um, Scoot, what I, what I wanted to ask you, because 
being American and coming on to a show like Big Brother, did you have any idea about the show? Had you watched any episodes before? Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a little idea of the show. Um, I watched a couple of episodes, so I kind of understood what it, what it was going to be. Um, I did not know to what level it was going to be, and I didn't know the mind games that they play with you. See, I'm, I, you know, when they cast Celebrity Big Brother, they, all, they have roles and slots. So they know who they're going to kind of get. They know who the person that's going to be the peacemaker is. They know who the person that's going to be the asshole is. They know everything about what they're going to do before they put you in it. And, um, you know, I knew a little bit about it. And, you know, when, before you go into the, to the, to the thing, I'm sure Alex and Jess could tell you, you're, in, you're sequestered in a room, which is now quarantine. Um, you know, you're sequestered in, in a room and the, and the guy comes around the psychiatrist and he says you know he says you know you're all right you're cool whatever you're ready to go and you this is maybe about 15 20 minutes before you go in and um i see yeah, i'm i'm ready I'm, I'm i'm good i'm cool he said i said listen man is there anything i need to know going in he said yo man just be yourself and be cool you know be, be good and i said you sure man i, I said you know I need to, I, I want some tips and pointers. He said, you're one of the first people who asked me, you know, you know, about tips and pointers and stuff. And I said, because I want to, you know, I want to know. He said, I said, well, are there any assholes coming in there? He said, multiple. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, okay, all right, cool. He said, multiple assholes going to be in there with you. And I just followed that. I was myself. So all the things that happened to me, Good and bad were all a result of who I am as a person. You understand where I'm coming yeah. from? Good things happen, really good things happen, and really bad things happen, all because I am the person I am. And I didn't change, I didn't change from that. I didn't waver from that at all. Now, with Alex, with you, it was the final series on Channel 4, you know, um, that you were on. And, of course, there were some huge names. You had Cisco, uh, Stephanie Beecham, of course, Vinnie Jones. Who did you connect with the most in the house? Um, Bass Hunter, um, Jonas Hopper. I was still friendly with him. But let's go back. I want to go back to what you just said about um, <clears throat> that they put you in with people that you might potentially have a bust up with. Well, there was a story in the paper um, about me and Dane Bowers because he is obviously my ex-wife's ex-partner. I'm totally cool. I've got, I'm not, I've got no ego like that. But we had, we had literally had a bust up two days before. And I had to meet him, a proper bust up. He threatened me. <laughs> he threatened me with gangsters and said he was going to kick my ass. Wow. And um, at the end of the party, and we had a little bit of a punch up. And I had to meet with the producers and say it was all cool. And it was all cool. <laughs> Coming to the big brother house with black eyes. And it, I felt terrible because I'm a professional. But I mean, it was, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it was a very, I'm not a violent person at all, but when someone threatens your life um, like, mm -hmm. and is drunk, my point is, it was, we, it, listen, I actually detest violence. And, um, but we, we were fine in there. We were fine. I had to just say, but to make out that we were all rosy and peachy. What were, what were you saying about Vinny? You're breaking up there. Your signal's very low. But uh, with what Vinny, say about Vinny Lewis. Vinny. Yeah, we're losing you there, Alex. Can you hear me? Unfortunately, hopefully we can get you back I in just a moment. You can hear me, can you? Um, so, Jess. Yeah. First of all, congratulations. Um, you're going to have a, another baby. You must be just really excited. Counter. Do you know? What? Oh, we can't hear you. <laughs> I think Alex is coming back on in just a moment. Um, so, yeah, so with Jess, um, what's life been like since Big Brother for you? Because obviously you come out of the house um, and it's a bit of a whirlwind for a few weeks. So what's life been like yeah. since and what have you been doing since? Well, do you know what? So I think The Apprentice was the first television show that I went on. And then going into Big Brother, I'd never experienced fame and even then I wouldn't say it was kind of fame but being in the public eye should I say and then it's just it's a really it's really weird but when I when I did those shows 
I definitely had low self-esteem and low confidence. And then when you're shoved in this public eye, you get given this false sense of validation and security. And then when you're out of it, or then when you see a bad press story, that again is a complete like mental head fork. Um, and then like shortly after coming out of the Big Brother house, my ex-partner died, um, who I've got the three girls with. And that literally just slammed me back into reality of why I'm here, what my purpose is. And then I went on this mental journey of self-discovery, uh, trained in all these different sorts of therapies. And that's taken me on to do what I do now, which I absolutely love. Um, and it is, yeah, it's just uh, I, like for the first time probably in my life, I just feel just secure in myself. And I just feel, I don't know, it's just, it's weird. I just feel completely different. But I know I had to have that experience yeah. to have this experience and to, to be who I am now. But it definitely opened. I'd say more the apprentice. I said the apprentice opened a lot of doors financially and with business and with work. Whereas Big Brother got me really out into the public eye, which um, which again, I suppose it helps. It's all opportunity, isn't it? And it's all doors opening. And with well, with Scoop, obviously you came here. And like I mean, Jess said it as soon as you're on the call earlier. She's a fan. Like you're such a legend here in the UK. Yeah. So um, obviously, what are your experiences like in the UK? Because I guess you've toured here, you've done shows here, so you must kind of have a bit of a love for the country. Well, you have to understand for like the last maybe eight nine years. Even before Celebrity Big Brother, I lived half my, my life in England. You know, my, my business is in London. My booking agency is in London. So I lived half of the week in America, and I would fly the other half and stay in England the other half. So I was already I, w I was already good out here. I wasn't calling anybody mate or anything like that, but I was good. Um, for, me, it was, for me, it was more cultural, you know, and I learned a lot of different things. I learned that humans... Humans, whenever they get into a condition, the new normal just becomes the new normal. Like when you're in there, I'm sure Jess and Alex could kind of attest to this. When you're in there, the first day or two, it's shocking that you have no, no Wi-Fi, no nothing, whatever, right? But as you, as you go on, that shit just becomes the new normal. And then you're used to it. And then you stop counting the hours and you just do the shit. You say, okay, at this time I'm going to exercise. At this time I'm going to do this. At this time I'm going to do this. And then the rest of it is just watching motherfuckers fight. And you know, for me, for me, um, part of the reason that I was kind of uh, uh, kicked out of the big brother house is because I was stopping all the fights. And you can't <laughs> stop the fights. You know, like what, what they would do is I would stop the fights and then they would go get, they'd be like, now, extra alcohol, and they would put more alcohol in the, in the thing, like, you know, yeah. I, and then I would stop the fights again, but, you know, because I was, I, I didn't want people to be on, on no shit like that. Now, the funny thing that happened is, the minute that I left, all the fights stopped, because, because, and I was told by the psychiatrist, because I went, and then I watched, like, the next two days, nobody was fighting anymore. And I, I call the psychiatrist and say, yo, they got me out of here for everybody to just have a free fall and start fighting. Why are they not fighting anymore? And the, and the man told me, he said, listen, they not fighting anymore because there's no one to stop the fights. Okay. There's no one to stop them. And then I learned a lot about myself. You know, and, you know, I learned that I'm an alpha male. And, and, and the man said, you know, when I, when I got out, because they give you, when you leave, they give you an exit. They give you, like, exit therapy. Like, I'm sure they could both tell you. They give you exit therapy. They give you a book with all your press clippings in it and an exit, you know, exit therapy or whatever. They gave me a book with my press clippings in it, which was about this big because I didn't do shit. And you I got the VIP treatment, fat boy. <laughs> I got none uh, of you, that. You, you didn't get that? Like, I they, when, I left, when I left, when I left, <laughs> When I left, what happened is when I left, the psychiatrist came to the room, they they gave me my phone back, and they gave me the press clippings, and they started talking to me. And he was like, yo, man, I just want to let you know that you're an uh, alpha male. And I was like, I'm not no alpha male. Like, you got James Hill in there. You got Austin Armacost. These dudes is like, you know, muscles and everything. He said, alpha male is not about muscles. Alpha male is the person who looks out for everybody who has everybody's interest in, in, at heart, who has everybody's respect. No matter, the whole time I was in there, 
Nobody, nobody disrespected me in no way. I had one problem. One problem. That's it. No, you were a great housewife. You were a great, you had a great calming effect. Um, and go, I want to go over to Alex. Um, like you mentioned earlier, going into the house, you had a lot of negativity from the press prior. And the great thing about your story was when you went in and showed people the real you, it just changed your life because people, we, you know, we, we saw things in magazines or, you know, what other people were saying um, surrounding your relationship with Katie Price. But when you went in there, you were just so genuine. And I think that's why the public just warmed to you. So did that feel like a relief to walk out and actually know that the public got to see the real side of you? Yeah, I, might call, I, I quote this many times. I call it the LSD years. I wasn't taking drugs, but life was surreal. I mean, I mean, I've done that. I had a little bit of fame. I've done soaps and I've had a bit of celebrity from my fighting. But for the, the, to being in the press every single day, being on TV, being in magazines, being talked about, walking down the street because of my association with my ex-wife, it was surreal. I, it, the world was weird. And it's like, and I've got all this, I had hate as well. And it's like, it's beyond weird. It, it was actually lovely what Scoop says, not having any social media, not having any outside contact. And all you have is communion and unity. And you start with the other people in the house and you start to, my personality, a curious Peter Pan, wanted to explore. I'm like, start to talk to people and without the pressures of the outside world, that was wonderful. In my recent existence in life, uh, like it's 20 years ago now, blimey, um, that's the last time I've ever not got up in the morning, looked at my phone, and the last thing I do before I go to bed is look at my phone. But for four weeks, didn't have that. It's wonderful. So, and that, that is so essential in life. We need to have, we need to do this more often. Without, you know, I mean, we had, I had all these cameras around, uh, 20 million people watching at one point. <laughs> but that, that aside, it was actually very therapeutic for me because my life was weird, man. It was like, I didn't know what planet I was on. I mean, well, one person you were in there with, and it was a moment I'd always remember, which is when Vinnie Jones was announced to be going in the house. No one could believe it. You just wouldn't expect him to go in there. And um, he went in, cheered, loved, but there were times where the public felt sorry for you in regards to his behaviour towards you. Now, I know you were very supportive yeah. after the house and, you know, you had yeah. no animosity uh, with Vinny. Do you yeah. think it's a case of we just saw a little clip of a 24-hour day and we didn't see the kind of the full... Listen, ev everybody, listen, we can all be ourselves. You, me, everybody. We all have moments where we say something stupid and dickish and we regret it. Unfortunately, in there, well, in life, some people, they're in the spotlight all the time. You say the wrong thing and it it can get personified. So that's, that's, the, well, that's the beauty of it. And you're being purposely put in there with people to bring out those scenarios. So look, he, he said some stupid stuff. I mean, I mean like he's, he's talking about he's the people's champion and he's got an $800 pair of socks. And I said to him, mate, come on. And he was trying to be the tough guy with me a few times. And I'm like, all right, okay, you can be the tough guy. It's not a problem. But then one day, he, he, I, I switched because he was being so rude to me. And I like, oh, come on, man. Like, and he backed down. And I thought, you're a bully. You're a bully. But then after that, he was actually all right, you know. So yeah. that's, that's people, though. I mean, I don't hold any grudges. I actually quite like him. Well, next up, I want to ask everybody what their upcoming projects are, things that you've been working on. Um, so I want to start with Jess, uh, projects that you've got coming up in the future that you might be able to tell us about. Yeah, so if you've got any spiritual females who've got a business listening, this is for you. Um, so I've got a new coaching program called Conscious Female Entrepreneurs, and it's for women who, um, well, basically, this I, I, sometimes I'm a bit conscious about saying this, but I'm a psychic medium and like if you don't believe in that that's fine but I know it to be true and like some of the experiences I've had and spirit coming through is just absolutely it's literally the best gift it's mind-blowing um and anyway so what this group does it's literally combining helping people to connect to source to the divine to develop spiritually but then also really practical skills so like building personal brands uh facebook ads click funnels um, stuff that can make them lots of money, especially in this climate, but then also in a really integral, authentic way. I tell you what, I bet Lord Sugar's pinching himself now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I've got four so kids, Jess, I'm 
So, Jess, can you read something for all of us now? Something quick and simple. You know do what? You I don't know why. So, as soon as you said that, I've got a, 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 I can see a baby boy coming in. So, I don't know whether, I mean, I don't know if this is on the cards or not, but I can literally, I've got a sense of a baby. Um, with Batman Scoop, so nothing's coming up. I feel like there's a block there. Um, I don't know, though. No, so sometimes what happens with spirit, because spirit is pure energy. You're, so we have the ability to block spirit or to welcome spirit. If, if you're not sceptical or, well, yes, yeah, not even sceptical. You, sometimes you can put an energetic block up. But I don't know, I'm trying to read something off scoop. I don't know. Let me get back. I'm going to look at a picture on your Instagram and you'll probably get at the end. Let me tell you something. I am highly, I am highly, I believe highly in uh, spiritual, spirituality and, um, and, and mediums reaching out. Yeah. There is a guy, there's a good friend of mine, he's a good friend of mine now, 26 years ago, he saved my life by yeah. telling me something that was going to happen. And I didn't yeah. walk into it. It was with a woman. I, I, I walked into a room and, and I, I was the same thing as I was saying the same thing as you. Ah, uh, yo, they never tell you nothing. They never tell you nothing that's real. They never tell you nothing that's bad. He put his hands on my head and I slumped in the chair like that. He said, if you don't leave this woman, he named her by name, alone, you're going to die. This is the way you're going to die. This is X, Y, and Z. Her, her boyfriend is going to come behind you and hit you in the head with a pipe. Because he, he's going to move, he's going to switch jobs and go work at a plumbing company. Two weeks later, the man switched the job and went to the plumbing company. So I highly believe in that. Yeah. It could wow. be that, um, it, it could be blocked because, you know, of course, we're all going through stress. Um, I'm mm -hmm. a very spiritual and very open person. Um, as yeah. far as the baby, that damn show sure ain't me because I got to protect it. <laughs> <laughs> it could be me because I'm having a baby. But yeah, you know, no, I feel like me, man. Don't, don't be putting that. Don't put that on me. I, I have two <laughs> kids. That, one is twenty yeah. and one is twenty-five. I, I don't want to see no more kids unless they come to my house and then they go home. I tell you one thing that's really cool. That. I can see a marriage happening, but I, I don't know if it's your marriage. So a marriage has come in, but keep that in your mind's eye and see. I don't know. If there's yeah, but Ooh. then again, <laughs> there's only fifteen people allowed to get marriage now, isn't there? Woo. <laughs> Ooh. you got to keep looking now. Uh, Jess is going to keep looking at everyone, see if she gets something. Yeah, well, uh, but Scoop, what's, um, tell us about you. What projects you've got coming up, what you're working on. Um, you know, for me, every night, at, every night at, uh, at 11 p.m. your time, I do Instagram Live. So I interview everybody from, you know, senators and stuff like that in America, to Snoop Dogg, to, to you know, whoever, whoever was hot in the 90s, my friends, and, you know, like you know, anybody, uh, you know, football players. Um, you know, U.S. football players. I haven't interviewed um, any um, any footballers, as you say. I would have loved to. I would love to interview Vinny Jones because that's a fucking hell of an interview. He grabbed the guy's cock in, 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 in front of seventy five thousand people. So that that would be amazing. Um, so I do I do these interviews uh, every night <clears throat> at eleven o'clock. So if, if anybody's joining, come join me uh, and watch me. We, we do a bunch of sex relationship talk. Uh, current events, everything. And then I also have a line of edibles coming out in uh, October, mid-October. It's called Moon Food. So that's going to be, that's going to be, uh, that's, that's going to be coming your way. Completely legal. However, they do get you buzzed. They get you buzzed as hell. So that's coming. Um, and, I, and, and, you know, just the fact that I'm continuing to do records. I do records every day. I just came, I just came out with a, with a couple of new records with a U.S. artists, I'm doing. I just did a remix for Missy Elliott, so I'm, I'm continuing to work. Just follow me at Fat Man Scoop on Instagram. You'll see everything. Do you know what? I love that. There's so many names mentioned there. That's just I incredible. I, I can see Jess's reaction to some, as soon as you said Missy Elliott, the eyes literally lit up. Um, Alex, what about you? What's um, kind of what you've been doing in the recent years and what projects have you got coming up that you're allowed to tell us well, about? Well, I'm a, I've always been a darling. People don't, an actor, thespian. Um, people don't really associate me with an actor, but although I worked seven times last year, I do two films, two plays, a, a pattern of mine and a couple of sitcoms. But um, I'm still, I'm having to work regularly because there's not, they're not the, the mega big paydays, but I'm doing something I love. So while I'm not doing that, I've returned back to what I've always loved, which is my training. I mean, I'm, 
I'm an athlete with over 300 competitions, fights. I like to call them competitions behind my back. Um, I'm very experienced at training people. So I've, um, and I'm an ex-army. And I, I love this. I almost felt like I was going backwards. What am I doing this? I'm doing boot camps. I run, I've got several boot camps. Um, the plan is to, to sit back though. And I, I've got lots of experienced trainers and I go and I get the, I get the, uh, the honour of going to different boot camps and sort of calling the shots like a conductor. Right, like, you do that, you yeah. do that. And it's quite nice. I don't have to be there. But that's, that's, and that's fine. And I like training people. I absolutely love it. So in the meantime, I mean, like I said, I'm still acting. Um, there's a project, that uh, quite a big project. I can't talk about it because I signed an NCNDA. Um, it's, uh, it's supposed to have started in June. But something's going on in the world, isn't it? Which is very <laughs> frustrating. Uh, and I, um, and let me get rid of that. I, um, yeah, I'm supposed to be. It's it keeps moving, moving location, but it's it's quite a big deal. I'm I'm basically I won't be in this country for the next six months. Fingers crossed. Um, I was supposed to do a flight. Yeah, it's quite a big deal, and it'd be going on for several years. Uh, it's a fantasy genre, just think like that, and it's um, it, it's, yeah, it's exciting. So that's the bit. So yeah, I've got my boot camps. Oh, away from all of that, Jess. Yeah. I have been trying for many years, yeah. me and my lovely lady, to um, to multiply. We've unfortunately had five miscarriages. Yeah. But we currently have five. Four super soldier reeds in the freezer. Amazing. Okay. I'm about to, about to embryos. Um, Isn't that... mini okay, so do you know, this is so weird, right? So I've literally just been on a course doing something over the past three days called Psych K. And what it is, if you've got any beliefs around um, the implantation, maybe, oh, it's not going to work or, or anything like that, you can remove that belief. And if you believe in energy, um, once you remove that belief, we can then install a new belief and it's pretty instant. But as soon as you came on, like, as soon as you said, I could just see you were the baby boy, like that. So, and isn't it weird that this is what, but you can yeah. do, um, afterwards, I'll, I'll give, get uh, my number off Lewis and I'll send you some stuff that you can do to do with the belief stuff. Like, this is literally, the work I do has changed my life. So, I'm a practitioner in something called Matrix Reimprinting and then now Psych K. But it's absolutely, if you've got any goals, if you've got any anxiety, any panic, any worry, it literally eliminates it. It's like no, it's like nothing I've ever experienced. And I've had childhood trauma, but through using this, it's just completely changed my life, like massively, from my belief point of view as well. That's good. I do believe in that. Like I said, I've had mind coaches. I've done all that stuff for, for many, yeah. many years. I've achieved everything I've wanted. And I've also brought in all the crap as well. Yeah. Because what you, where your energy, where you think, you, you bring it. So if you're thinking negative stuff, guess what? You, Life can be shit. I understand about vibration, all that stuff, and yeah. yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm fascinated, especially with it's not being the right time. That's why I've had we've had yeah. five miscarriages, unfortunately. But I, I'm not I'm, I'm not sad because I totally 100% believe mini reads coming. I, well, yeah, I do, and it's, isn't it weird as well? Like just from, but I do think a baby boy, and I feel okay. So 18 months has just come in, so I don't know whether you will have a baby in 18 months or whether um, that's when it will happen, but 18 months, uh, oh no, okay, October, but I feel like it's next October. I'll be stalking your Instagram, and I'm like, is he pregnant yet? Are they having the baby? <laughs> oh, hang we on, were, I'm just going to, we sorry guys. We yeah. were, I mean, I, I believe that, I believe that, I totally believe that, and um, yeah. I was going to say, so you know it. Doing these reunions, I've never had so many spiritual, like-minded people. It's actually incredible to see how every single one of you are so yeah. uh, spiritual and um, feel energy. It's quite nice to see today. You know, I think, though, I honestly feel like, I, like there's around 80% of people who are spiritual and believe in this. But as a society, if you're spiritual, because we've been suppressed and because of everything that's on the TV, the media... You classed as woo woo. You classed as a mentalist, <laughs> when really, like, like spirituality and the divine, and when you connect, you have the most profound oh, experiences. I, I you have don't to experience know. Yes. I don't know if I agree with that. I think there's a paradigm shift. I think people are waking up. I agree with that. There's, 
there's, there's, there's what we call critical mass. When enough people get yeah. it, everybody gets it. It's the hundred monkey syndrome. When yeah. you, when the, when everybody's, and everybody's starting to wake up. I mean, what's yeah. going about what's going on in the world right now with this COVID? I mean, people are like, there's a lot of people who aren't just taking it. No, I want to <laughs> I'm on social media I'm like you need to check out the NHS statistics yeah yeah you have to tell me about that so. it's gonna rain all the time you're gonna have a you're gonna have a baby so you're gonna be good bro you're gonna have a yeah. baby that's what you've been looking for I mean yeah. I have two so I understand how about yours uh, my oh mine is 20 one is 25 and one is 20 so oh, you're a big, you're I'm, a at the end of, I'm at the end of my journey brother I, I don't I don't want I don't want no more, brother. I'm, I'm good. You, you <laughs> have all the babies for me. Oh, amazing. What about you, Lewis? No, no babies. Just a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Don't think I'll have any. But um, thank you so but, much. Good, Genuinely, good. All Where of do you, you live? Where do you live? I, li I, li I, live in, I live in the New York, New Jersey metro area. I live in New Jersey. Um, Lovely. I used to live in New York, but I got out of New York years ago because you know I, I don't I don't I, I like to be away from people and I'm moving I'm actually moving to Pennsylvania which is further away from New York City. I don't want nothing to do with that shit man like it's crazy really? out here. It's crazy. Yeah. How how you find it how are you finding it with the COVID? I mean I, I don't know you know it's like man, in London, 50, but... 50 people